All right, as we'll get started here. So welcome to basically how to make a Pinterest-like site without touching any code. Uh, my name is Brett Anderson. I work uh, at KWall uh, Company. I've been there for about eight months now. Uh, I love it. Uh, I'm one of their graphic designers, so I do more of the front end uh, designing and a little bit of the back end, uh, not necessarily coding, but at least starting it, theming it, things like that. And we have people who are a lot smarter than me who do the rest of the work. Um, so one of the things that uh, we will learn here, I'll, I'm kind of showcasing, is how to make a Pinterest site or Pinterest-like site and how kind of easy it is to do with Drupal without a lot of work. You know, you don't have to code a lot. You don't have, I mean, if you can code, it'll look that much better. But even, you know, without that, it'll be great. Um, so, Pinterest. Uh, how many people have a Pinterest account or use Pinterest? Okay, quite a few. Uh, how many people get sucked into it for hours on end? <laughs> how many people have it? Yeah, how many it? Um, and so, this is my, let's see. There we go. So here's Pinterest. So Pinterest basically uh, has changed the world, has changed how kind of creative we are. The do-it-yourself world has changed because that kind of content or that information is so widely accessible. And you'd probably have to Google for a long time to ever find you know, the secret of uh, scrubbing a toilet properly, you know, in five easy steps or, you know, it, Pinterest has done a lot. Um, it goes to show that people love a visual experience. We're very visual people. We like to see pictures. As great as Google is, you have to read a lot. And Pinterest is all, oh, that looks nice. And then you'll go and research it and read more. But otherwise, you're just scrolling through. Um, and it's one of those things that you wish you would have thought of. Um, and that you wish you would have done. And that's one of the key things, at least as a graphic designer, that is when I see a, you know, a great art piece or whatever, I'm like, ah, I wish I would have done that. And you know then it must be a good design if you wish you would have done that. Um, and this is a friend of mine. She posted this a couple days ago, and she's like, crap, I found Pinterest. And as we, all, you know, as we were saying, you get sucked into it, and it's suddenly this, like, social thing that you're just like, oh my gosh, I, I love this, now I am consumed, oh no. Um, so what makes up Pinterest? Basically searching, uh, viewing content, pinning your boards, um, which are collecting your pins or these, uh, the content that's there. You have your friends, you have friends that you can follow. Uh, et cetera. You can post your own things, you can repin, uh, you can like things, you can comment, you can share the original link, stuff like that. Um, so the Pinterest bandwagon, basically we love it so much that we steal the idea. Um, and I mean that's even a part of design, that's kind of how it is, is that you see something you like and you're like, well that works. So might as well copy it because it, it looks good. Uh, everyone wants a piece of the Pinterest um, hype that's going on right now. Uh, everyone's creating themes for it. There's plugins to make your site look like Pinterest. I think WordPress is probably getting the most uh, like attention because of that. I, I don't know how many emails I get every day. It's like, make your, you know, look at these 17 different uh, themes for WordPress that look like Pinterest. Like, okay. Um, and so everyone's trying to be like Pinterest. It's kind of like when Facebook had its big start. Everyone was like, time to be social media. Like, let's get your friends, let's start liking things. How can I make a Facebook of my own? And you just never quite can you know, make it, um, but you can at least have you know, a good experience. So here are, some other, here are some of those people that are on that bandwagon. Um, Weloveit.com, I believe. Uh, image sharing, kind of the same idea as Pinterest, 
Um, Pinterest is a lot broader in what their uh, content is. This is more focused on image sharing. Uh, Loveit.com, sharing what you love. Also quite broad in what it is. Um, Pixie, um, another image discovery. Uh, all kind of formatted in the same and Pinspire, I mean, how can you not that's, that's about as close as Pinterest as can be um, but they all basically have the same layout that same grid uh, everything stacks, everything you know, you have basically the same functionality but worded differently um, so now, here I'll introduce my creation of a Pinterest-like site called Cintib uh, stuff I need to buy, and I you can go here, cintib.com. You can all register and start. Stuff. No, um, that was not a plug. Uh, and so, where this all came from was I took a class last semester. Um, I go to the Laguna Art College, and it was on web design and kind of coding. We're learning about databases, and my teacher gave us the task, we had to come up with an idea that was basically collecting uh, information that people, or links that people were going to submit. And we had to collect that and bring it out of the database. Um, and what was funny is, as I said before, that people like a visual experience. Well, if you've ever had to try to code and make it so people can upload images and have those by hand, it's very difficult and it's a lot more of a task than uh, you can think, but for some reason my teacher didn't think that, oh, I'm an art teacher. These kids like pictures. Obviously they're going to want to have pictures on their site. So every single one of us in my class came up with these like exact, you know, crazy ideas with pictures all over and he's like, uh, I just want links, like, oh no. And so as he was going through describing what he wanted, I was thinking in my head, I could do this without any hassle in Drupal. Like, I could do the images because Drupal comes with that base, you know, you can upload that kind of stuff, you can add modules, views are the greatest thing for this. I'll just do that. And so I tried, you know, I asked him, like, can I just do it in Drupal? Like, I can make it so nice. And he's like, no, I want you to actually have to learn it. So um, when it came time, I actually, uh, presented his version, uh, which I have here. This is the Scented PHP version, I call it. Um, and so this is what it looks like. It just doesn't have any images. And the idea behind Scented is that I create a list for myself of things that I want to buy. And whether or not I can afford it, it's just kind of a dream that's out there. Um, I don't, I don't have it on this one, but there's a BMW I want. A little pricey. Uh, maybe a company car one of these days, but uh, anyway. Um, and so basically, it's a place where you can go, you can submit a product that you want or that you like. You put the uh, information there, you say where you got it. It's like the Apple display. You put what it is, you put the price, you put where you, can you find it, obviously apple.com. And the Apple display title is what links you to the actual like product page. And I just kind of wanted a way to bring everyone together. And so, the, so I presented this. And after I had finished, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, it works, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, and I kind of did an Apple, Steve Jobs, one more thing. And then I showcased what I had built in Drupal. And now it's not finished, but this is basically what it looks like. Um, you have your search, you have your views, and this is where views and flags are your best friend. And so here I can, I'm able to have images and so much more flexibility with that. Um, so here are kind of the features of Cintib. Uh, collection of things needed that things needed you want to buy, easy way to collect the products you need, easy access to where you can buy the products, uh, user rating and comments, wide variety of categories, follow other people as well, see their need to buys, uh, find deals and discounts. Some of these are also ideas. 
uh, export your list as a PDF or email it to someone, so a Christmas list, basically, um, and add images from external sites. I didn't want you to have to download it to your laptop and then you know, upload it, but you can use that uh, remote URL, which you can then grab from another site. Um, so basic things that you need to build a site like this is obviously Drupal. Um, flags, similar to pinning, um, basically you're just telling it, you know, you can kind of give it a, a command and say, oh, I want to buy this, and it links it to your user account. Uh, views, in which you're displaying all this information that you're collecting, and links, so that obviously you can link back to where the source is. Um, other things, I think we all know, infinite scroll, there is a module for it. Um, but it's that where basically you get sucked in because Pinterest starts, once you get to the bottom, it loads another whole, you know, 30 more, and you're like, oh, great, and then it's just a never-ending two hours go by, and you're, <laughs> you're like, oh, no. Um, social media login, uh, easy way for people to connect their Facebook. They don't have to register for it. They can just have it connect to their Facebook and log in and... I mean, you can do that with Twitter, many other social media, they have that. Um, there's the remote file upload, and then uh, flag groups or flag lists, I believe it's called, uh, is similar to boards, and it's basically where you can select um, different items and then put that into a collection. Um, so basically, to explain kind of how flags works is um, you create under the, when you install flags uh, and add it as a module, you are then, you go to the structure menu of Drupal, and this is kind of what you're presented with. And basically you add a new flag, you title it, um, what you need, you have your name up here, and then you have um, kind of what you're gonna flag, you have different messages that you can say. So you have the initial, like, what is it going to say flag? So basically it's like bookmarking. Um, and so you can say, oh, I'd like, I want the button to say, like, uh, need to buy, like, for in my case. Or it's a good product or it's a bad product or uh, inappropriate, things like that. And then you have what the message, what the, after you've clicked it, what then it will say. So it'll say, like, you would like to say it's not appropriate, or it's appropriate now, maybe it wasn't, or it's not good anymore, or, you know, you kind of have to do back and forth. Um, and then you have messages that come up afterwards that say, oh, you have successfully flagged this item, you have successfully unflagged this item. Um, and so that's, basic, that's kind of the basic explanation of flags. And then at the bottom, you'll have a place where it says, what content type would you like to associate this with? And you can um, say you want it to be attached to, for my case, links that people have submitted is a content type that I created. Um, so here's the flags that I created, which are uh, need to buy, good, bad, inappropriate, and good to go. Um, so on the back end, I created a uh, kind of an administrative view that shows when people upload a new link, I am then it'll automatically post it, and then it'll show up here where it's, where I can go through and say, oh no, that's inappropriate, or no, that's good to go. Like that's kind of my way of uh, monitoring the stuff that's coming into the site. Um, and then the user rating, obviously, is good, bad. Uh, so here's the way that I have people creating links. Uh, so when you go to the site and you say, oh, I'd like to submit a link for people to see what stuff you know I want to collect or I want to buy, you have the title, um, you have the product image, you have the link, the original like link where the actual product resides. Um, and you have, and you can submit a title for what you want for that. And then you have where can you buy it, basically the generic uh, place so if you can buy it at Best Buy, then put bestbuy.com. Um, you have the price, you have what category you'd like to, to be in, kind of like Pinterest, they have um, you know, clothing, art, uh, tech, uh, software, you know, the list goes on. 
and different tags and a description of what the link or the product is. Um, so here's how products are shown, and you can kind of see the, these are the flags, and basically I just um, put images over them as the icons. Um, and so you have your product name, you have the product image, you have where to buy this, Apple, you have the price, you have who submitted the link, so obviously I would love to have an Apple display. Um, and then you have whether or not when it's highlighted blue, that means that you've clicked it and you've said, I would like to buy that. Um, I think it's a good product. Uh, I can say it's a bad product or comment. Um, and I wanted kind of the user rating because how many times you know, are you like, oh, I really need a new CD player, or MP3 player, and you know, you're going through and I'm like, I know Sony maybe makes a nice one. And then you're going through and you're like, oh, maybe I'll buy this one. But then here, if it, tons of people are saying, no, it's not a good product, you're like, oh, maybe I'll look at an MP3 player that people like, and you'll go on from there. And so I wanted a lot of kind of user interaction, a lot of, uh, much more focused on the consumer side of things. Um, and so world application, um, how this was so great. So my... So I created it, and I was like, I'm the only one that's submitting links. And so I asked my fiance if she would come in, add some things, you know, just play around with it, give me some feedback. And so her birthday rolls around last month. I didn't even have to ask her what she wanted. I just went on there, looked at what she had submitted, found the link to where the... Um, Actually, do I have it on here? If I go back, I think you'll see it. So I had, these were my options, because this is the recent activity. And um, so the shoes were kind of out of price. Those were quite expensive. Um, the handbag, I was like, I'm gonna, that's the one I'm going to get. So I go to the link, and it was sold out. I was like, oh, no. Uh, dress is also kind of pricey. I didn't feel like running shoes were very appropriate. Um, I definitely don't have money for a MacBook Pro. I felt like the Veronica Mars DVDs were kind of cheap. You know, that's not, I should be, I should be up there a little bit more than that. So I went with the, the flat iron hair straightener. I, you know, I got good, huh? It's just, she's, she is still, she's still around, you know, she stayed with me even after that. <laughs> so just that was, that's my uh, real world application um, of how, you know, for me at least, it worked out very well. I hope she continues uh, throughout the couple months so that when Christmas rolls around, I'm safe. Uh, she needs to update it so there's not just shoes on there that are quite expensive. Um, and so then there's kind of features that I hope to, to add at some point. Um, need to buy groups, that's kind of where that flagging list come in. Uh, better commenting, better user backend, uh, recommended links, kind of a sidebar, like, oh, other people like this. User stats, what people liked, or how many you've liked. Uh, suggest better deals. Um, one of the things that I would like to do with it is, for instance, um, with, say, like the Apple display. If someone comes in and says, like, oh, well, I know, I mean, obviously you can get on Apple, but if you go to Amazon, it's, you know, $30 cheaper. And they can submit that, and then as you go and you're like, oh, I want to buy an Apple display, you see where other people have said, oh, you can get a better discount. Uh, or like the next one where it says companies can add coupons and deals. That'd be great for other companies to come in, register, and say, well, for this you know, week or month at BestBuy.com, if you buy now, you can get 20% off you know, Apple products or you know, a new HP computer. You know, and they can kind of do that, and you can scroll through and see what deals companies are going to give you. Uh, following people a little bit more and exporting your list uh, of things that you want to buy. Like I said, birthdays, Christmas, make things a lot easier. Um, so throughout that, did I do any custom coding? I didn't. 
Um, it's all pretty much views um, and kind of how, you know, just collecting the fields from that links content type and just displaying it and using each view row to uh, show that. Yeah, a question. Can you do um, the suggested um, better deals without any coding? Is there a model for that? Uh, with that, I mean, it, obviously, with this whole, you know, uh, making a Pinterest site, if you do know custom coding, obviously it can be so much better. And you could probably do it in a much cleaner way. Um, the idea that I had for making the company section was just to make kind of another uh, content type or even maybe like an entity that you could link to a specific um, link, like a specific node, um, and that way it would kind of have some kind of connection with it. Have you seen Pinboard? That's a Google um, Pinterest uh, product that you can buy. I haven't, no. Yeah, it's like it's a clone of Pinterest. It's basically the same thing. It costs like $200 or something. Wow. Pinboard. Pinboard. Okay. I like that. You probably also put like a reference on your, yeah, a file that you type, like a reference to another one. Yeah. Do some of that still need no coding? Yeah. Bring that into view. Yeah. So basically, throughout this whole thing, you know, my my real, you know, reason for sharing this or showing this is really to show that how easy it is and how you can make something look, you know, nice. You can have a user interaction. Everything's kind of there to some degree in core that you need to get started um, as you know a, a Pinterest-like site and uh, to show those kind of things. Um, obviously, with some design and with theming and stuff, you can make it look that much better. Uh, is that so, uh, questions? I mean, you don't even. Uh. Did I did use modules added on, so that's where views come in and flags, and those are your real main two, at least that I used, and then obviously other things to enhance it. Uh, I can even show you here. Which content types are you doing? You had a file content type for the links? The I'll show you. Here, yeah, I'll roll this over. So let's see. <coughs> go to go to structure. Oh. <laughs> nice error messages. Um, so here I just have like basic pages. So I have um, the better deal was what I was working on making as a content type, I may change that as I've learned more about entities and things like that. Uh, regular blocks. And then this link uh, content type is really where people can create that. And that's where you go in. Um, that link list? Link, link list? Well, that's, I don't know if I created that right then when I was playing with that. So I don't know if that one's necessarily right. Um, but mostly this is what powers the whole site, is just the link content type. Just out of curiosity, I'm looking at your site here. Um, did you create this theme yourself, or is this a theme that came like, um, It started, I built it off of the Bootstrap um, theme, and then added on where so you needed to. Yeah. I'm saying, at least when I'm main coding, um, no, like, PHP real, like, in-depth, you know, custom, like, I didn't create a custom module. Okay. You can do a whole lot of flag rules. Yeah. I haven't gotten a lot into rules, but for flag-wise, yes, that's where I felt like with flags and views, you know, at least fundamentally, everything was there that I needed just from the get go. Oh. So, um, what else was I going to show? Oh, I was going to show kind of how my um, here at the bottom show you one of the views that I created. Um, Yeah, show the need to buy. I think that's right. Uh, no, that's old one. Oh, 
here we go. So here's all the views, basically, that um, so I have like the browse, the home, uh, uploads, recent. I probably should split this out into multiple uh, views. But basically, this is how it's set up. So there's uh, the fields, and how there's um, deal link, regular link, product image, uh, add link, flag. And so it actually with uh, to get your flag field to show up, you have to have relationships to the flag itself that you've created. Um, so when you first, you know, when you create one and then you go to make your view, you have to make sure that you have a relationship for that, for each individual one. Um, and then it'll show up as a field. Um, and then you get all of the other information, how many times it's been flagged, things like that. Um, and you can display that information. So that's basically how I set up my view, or at least one of the views, the browse one. Well, without without the relationship, I don't think you get anything. Yeah, I don't think you see any of the um, like it doesn't even show flags as an option. Um, so this is basically what it looks. This is just the home page, different things that people have submitted, site activity. Um, here's recent activity. So these are the people that I'm subscribed to. It shows what things they've uh, marked as something they'd like to buy. Um, you can see like recently added are these. And so then when you go here, you can see when I roll over, it just has a different rating. So maybe I want to get the Star Wars Han Solo candy bars. And so then it just flags it. And then if I go back up here to like my account, I can see what things I want to buy. And there he is, Han Solo. <coughs> So if any of you would like to come in, you know, I'm looking for a Dyson, uh, you know. <laughs> it's a great idea. So. Yeah. My wife and I were just talking about making a list of things that we need to buy, you know, stuff like that and, and kind of fitting it with our budget. So, you know, with additional features like almost, you know, having all of the price options and store options, somehow to access that with each item that's automatically as a, you know, a quick crawl or something to find all that uh, information across the, the internet. It's, it's yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I mean, it's, um, I think there's, when I was first making this, I was like, oh, maybe I'll actually, like, make it something that, you know, I mean, obviously I want to make it something people can use. Um, and then I went and I saw somewhere that someone was doing, like, almost the same thing. And I was like, oh, discouraged. But I was like, eh, I might as well still build it and, you know, have some fun with it. So, I mean, hey, it was mostly for personal use anyway, because I was like, might as well keep track of it, not have to keep writing it down on a piece of paper and losing that piece of paper and like, oh, no. Like, what did I want to buy again? So. <laughs> Why did you select S for select? Um, Just because it has to be select? Well, not necessarily for select, mostly because it goes off of the logo uh, for Cintib. Oh, right, of course. For like, I need to buy this. Um, I, w I mean, originally I would have liked to use like the whole like need to buy um, acronym, but I felt like that was too long and uh, I was kind of cluttering the design of it. And, and that, is that text, right? Is the S is text? No, that's an image. It's an image. Yeah. Because I want it to look, um, so even there it comes up says remove this from your list. Um, but yeah, I want it to look similar to the logo. So it's just custom icons that I created. Do you have any modules that might have, like, you know how you can type something in on, like, LinkedIn or Facebook and it kind of looks, so the metadata gives you options for images? I was wondering if that would be mm -mm. cool. You just kind of type it in, or you paste in, like, a link in your Facebook and it looks it up. Maybe we'll previous, like, kind of uh, we can do that on this, uh, module, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if I'm going to take programming. 
at least for this lecture, it would, it would mess it up. But yeah. any other questions? I know. I don't have any. I don't have any deadlines for those. No timeline. Too busy. No free time. <laughs> How many uh, uh, members do you have then? Uh, I think I have three, including myself. <laughs> Exponential growth. <laughs> Exponential growth. Me, my fiance, and a classmate of mine that when I showcased it, they. C can you estimate, um, just estimate how many hours it took you to get to where it is now? I should have kept track of it. Um, I don't even, it's hard to guesstimate sometimes. How many weeks? How many weeks? Uh, we had to do the project in maybe like four weeks. So it's four weeks plus some of the time from that point until now that I've played with it a little bit more. In the um, initial four weeks, how many but like, Two, five? In a week, probably like Six or seven, maybe. So a week. Yeah, so a lot of time. Burning out overnight, hacking on this for four weeks. Wow. No, it was just either like during during a class that I'm just sitting there or it's things like clean, that. So it's under forty hours for sure. Plus, it's been a lot of stuff at and, Yeah, and I mean, definitely, you know, learning from. I'd ask a lot of questions from the guys at work. So this includes your learning. Um, and yeah. <laughs> So, and I mean, I've really only been using Drupal for about like eight months. What, what I like about it is it's not, well, if you, if you block out the, um, what do you even call it, the editing bar on top, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, super, it's not screaming Drupal in your face. It's not like a stock, you know, yeah. Drupal it's nice. Yeah. Can you go through adding a Sure. On screen. So, what's the middle link here? So we'll take you here. Um, what should we make? <laughs> uh, do an iMac or something. Let's do another iMac. Uh, screen. Or iMac. <laughs> Where they come in, like 24 inch screens. <laughs> 24 or something. Uh, so then, let's see. Select media. We'll have to go to. Oh. There it is. Let's go to apple.com. Let's look at the store. Wait, did you just uh, fire the, the browse to Apple or manually? I just did. Um, I mean, that uh, didn't fire off your page. No, oh, okay. it's just a new tab. It's shopping for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if only it was that easy. That would be too. Yeah, um, let's see. Hopefully it'll copy. There we go. So you just copy the image URL, then come back to the site. You can say, oh, there it is. I can't see from this angle very well. Wait for it to load. You have a bunch of, at least I think I have a bunch of options since I'm admin. And then you can just. Looks like you selected all those checkboxes. Yeah, basically. And you can submit it. So you just paste the URL in there, submit it. Um, it may or may not come up. Uh, let's see. So this is uh, iMac. Let's see. Oh, this is the page that I got it from. So copy this. And obviously we got from Apple. Does Pinterest also start the URL or does it just copy them? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's from what, what kind of incredible legal gymnastics must they be going to be now? <laughs> I mean, for a personal site, this is like totally okay. But right. For, I believe you, you can. I've been, been uh, challenged by some company to say the images that are on their person's website is copyrighted. How dare you point them to the product that I want to buy? You know. I mean, Facebook and Twitter, well, Twitter and 
Facebook has the same issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And also, if you, and also, if you post something from Amazon, they put an Amazon affiliate link in Pinterest, Amazon affiliate link, if you didn't already have it. They make some money as well. Yeah. yeah. They do it automatically. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. If, if, if you copy and paste your own, then they would be able to replace it. If you don't have an affiliate link, they put their own. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Makes, they make some good money. Well, I mean, it's having really over the years, all the web developers that have been crying the boots about it and grabbing their images, I mean, yeah. it's a nice solution. Uh, yeah, the difference there is that at least Pinterest is designed to point you back at the place that you It's not like you're just stealing a foot on your blog, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the same, you know, idea base that this has is like, look, I'm not just stealing it and like saying, oh, buy it from me or something. I'm telling you to go and purchase it from You're them. You're doing the programmatically. You can say that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm basically trying to help them out. Write that down. That's good. And then... Well, actually, this... Um, this, there's a module that's a link module, and it gives you the option of adding a title to that. Um, but now, uh, after some time of learning about um, Drupal a bit more, I found that if you just use a regular, um, I think it's text link, it gives you the option of putting a URL in. And that's a bit, it's a lot cleaner way. And then you just add another field that's a text area or a text field that's for the title and you just link the two together in your view. Uh, it's a lot cleaner and nicer way of doing things. But at the time that I set it up, there's a link module that basically just does this for you. Um, so after you submitted all the data, click save. Wait for something. What went wrong? Oh, price. What did I do wrong on the price? Oh, I think you can't have uh, commas. Yeah, that was, uh, it gets the back of it. <laughs> well, that was the image I got. So if you really like the, um, so then, so you've submitted it. So now we'll go to recently added, and there it is. And then you can go right away and say, I would like that. And to, say it's a good add to your own list, you have to submit it first. And yeah. Then add it to your list. Yeah. It doesn't automatically. Well, list. you have. I have two different lists here. I have one that's my need to buys, mm -hmm. and then my uploads. Because one thing that I was thinking of is that what if you upload something that you think is cool, but you don't necessarily want to buy, but you think other people would like to have it. So I've done that. You know, as I go through, I'll look through a blog. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I wouldn't necessarily buy it, but it's cool looking, and so I'll put it on my site, and maybe somebody else can, you know, get some use out of it. Um, if I were going to try to add that exact same product, would it actually create? Uh, it would create another one. Another one, another one. Yeah, that's where probably coding would come in, and you'd say if it already exists. Just add it as I need to buy. Uh, yeah, maybe say yeah, it already exists, and links you to the page or something no, like that. Yeah, I mean that's where like the user rating comes in, and that if you know people keep, you know, hitting it and saying, "Oh, it's a really good product," then when you come to popular, oh, well, there's popular, and then there's popular is where it's how many times it's been added as something need to buy, and here for some reason it's showing two of those, um, but then you have top rated, uh, which will show you that I really want an iPad, uh, <laughs> uh, and things like that. So, so, so. The rating is the number of thumbs? Yeah, the number of this is a good product. And popular is and popular added is to list. Added to list. How many times someone wants, you know, how many times people want to buy it? Who wants to buy it? How many times? So, out of curiosity, your uh, user menu, is, is that a, a module generated that, or did you style that with uh, your My Account monitor out and things like that? Um, I believe this is just Superfish. It's a shortcut. Because that's a core menu. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's good. Yeah, I, this is a more of a custom one. I just added uh, with Superfish, added those as menu links.
And so, yeah, even if you go, if you click my account, then it'll take you to an account pages where you have like the Facebook Connect, um, my list, which I'm working on trying to get to work, Facebook friends, uh, people I'm following. Uh, and then now here you see I submitted a link and I need to say whether or not it's inappropriate or good to go. If I click good to go and then I refresh the page, then it no longer shows up because I say it's appropriate. Can you edit that after the fact? So you approve it and then someone goes back and edit it to something else? I think the I, was delayed, well, I mean, I need to make another view that says that has all the ones that I've marked as inappropriate, and then I can go back and say, oh, well, maybe it wasn't that bad. But <laughs> it's true. I mean, yeah, if you if it's inappropriate, it probably should just get deleted. But well, I thought when we were looking at the grid where it showed all of your the flagging mechanism. Mm -hmm. I thought the action I looked at that one. I thought the action on the right said delete, and I thought, oh, delete. That means gone forever delete, or? Oh, uh, I think that was just if you want to delete the flag. Oh, okay. That was, so show, what yeah. that was showing was that. Um, that was the action for the, the, the flag. flag itself. Let's see if I can go back here. Uh, this one? Oh, here, yeah. where it says operations. Well, that's that's what it's saying that for this, for when you're creating a flag, what operations you have, edit, uh, delete, and export. So those are, you're editing the flag, uh, that flag that you created. So those. So yeah, here then it tells you what node types, whether or not it's global. Oop. Going through my slides. Um, yeah. And different actions in this. So that is symptoms. So I encourage any of you, if you want, you know, think up of an idea that, you know, like you're saying, even you and your wife, you know, have this idea that you want to, you know, have a list of things. Well, with Drupal, you can do that really easily with, you know, flagging things. Um, I mean, maybe in your case, if it's something that's very personal, you're not having other people come on to it, you don't necessarily need flags, but just a way of submitting content and showing it and having kind of a, a social media uh, site is relatively easy with Drupal. All right. Let's see. So if there's no other questions, I'm...